because of the springs in the system itself. So if, if I put this at one and I put this at zero, then the system, the car is still going to move. Okay, if this is zero and this is zero, what would happen? Nothing, the car would sit there, right? If this is one and this is zero, the car is going to move. If, if it's just sitting here at rest, it's probably not going to move. So what we have to do is we have to move it from that initial system, meaning the springs are completely at a, at a resting point, at a neutral position. I think that explains why they see some initial motion injuries, but not necessarily why it's that. But maybe I'll see it later. Well, remember, this is just a one, or one over A. You could, if you wanted to push it down, you could change this to a peak of any scale. That's the point. This, okay. this is just a general solution. Okay. But depending if you want to hit it really hard, right? Maybe five of us all decide to go jump on the bumper once you put a five here or something. But this is just this is just to find a simple solution. You can scale it based on the one. Okay. Yeah. Ask about the case I can. The bumpers are usually higher up on the ground, so that means you'd be starting at one, but then it would go to the way you can zero in two. So then that's going to be higher than you could right. So you're you're you would be saying change the scale. Yes. But then your y of zero would be one. Yeah, we want to start with these. So, but, and remember, we're thinking about how our equation describes this. So let's go on. And remember, it mean, it, this, this one and this minus one, they may not be meters. They might be an inch. So cars don't, unless the shocks are really bad, they don't move a lot. So you can put, I'm just going to put units. You can use whatever units you need. All right. Let's be tough. Another one. <laughs> All right, what do you got? So when you jump on the car, you're spawning the spores. Correct. So aren't you giving it an acceleration? You are, but we can't we can't control that based on our initial conditions. There we go. You're right. You're not giving the you're only giving the actual velocity. Yeah, I'm not giving the velocity as a function. I'm going to have to think about the acceleration much. I have to admit, I can understand velocity, but man, as soon as you put acceleration into it, this is leading to physics. I might be pass it off to another Tom. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Physics gets hard to me really fast. So uh, how that you're right. Obviously, acceleration is what is being affected. But remember, I'm going to just trust the math. That's what we spent all that time working on. <coughs> so I'm going to use that. I know that's my solution. How I can describe it in words, pictures, and car bumpers, I'm not so sure. i got to be honest with you. You might want to talk to the other Yeah, it would be like this. This is how you guys will think of me. Because he wants a really good answer, right? So this will be him. This will be him. <laughs> 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 right, I'm like, trust the math. He's like, oh yeah, car bumper. I can tell you all about them. <laughs> all right, so let's let's try this. Uh, what do we got? Our initial, uh, our general solution. This is what we do know, and we we know that it can change based on all sorts of different things. Let's just start with our general solution, and we'll trust them. So, um, not uh, why. I'm just going to write, I'm just going to write y. We know it's the null solution because it equals 0. But yeah, does that bother you if I don't write the n? Okay, we'll write the n. So our null solution at 0, I'll just write, I'm going to bring that one over. So I'm going to write this way. Utilize what we know. Utilize what we know. So here's what we know. We know that our null, our null solution yn is c1 e s1 t plus c2 e b 
S to T n. We have initial conditions of y zero is zero and y prime of zero is one over a. And yes, that a is this a. All right, let's try this. Let's just apply our initial conditions. So, uh, y zero equals zero equals, so if I plug in a zero to the exponential, it becomes one. And it becomes one in the second one, so I'm left with a c1 plus c2. And, uh, oh, what does this tell me? I'm going to just write that. This tells me, or this implies, that C1 is the same as minus C2. I think we're going to need that. I think that's my gut feeling. Uh, let's look at our next one. It says that Y prime of 0. Oh, wait a minute. We can't do that yet, can we? We can't use this one until we know what y prime is. So let's find y prime. So y prime t is c1 s1 e the s1 t plus c2 s2 e the s Now we can solve. So we have y prime from 0, that's equal to 1 over a, which is equal to, all right, now we plug in our 0 into y prime. So the, e, the exponentials, those both become 1, and I'm left with this problem of c1 s1 plus c2 s2. So c1. S1 plus C2 S2. Um, oh, let's use this. We know that C1 is the same as minus C2. So I'm going to write this as 1 over A is equal to minus C2 S1 plus C2 S2. I'm going to factor and solve. I have 1 over A is equal to C2 times, I looks like it's going to be an S2 minus S2. Is <coughs> that what you get? So I can write this as C2 is 1 over A times S2 minus, hang on, minus S1. Minus S1. There we go. Oh, and we know that in C1, Yeah. 
S P back in the one what well, I get. If S2 goes to S1, then you get we will. So hold out. I know. Good stuff yet to happen. Uh, oh. We call this we we use G of T to represent <coughs> represent this special solution. Or special, and it has a name called it the fundamental solution. Special comma fundamental solution. Fundamental solution. So what that means is that the null solution based on those unique, uh, those unique Initial conditions, we're going to use G. So we write this as uh, G of T equals, uh, what do I have? I have C1, so this is going to be minus 1 E S 1 T over A times S2 minus S1 plus 1 e the s2 t over a s2 minus s1. We have a common denominator. Let's clean this up and write this as e s2 t minus e S1 T over A times S2 minus S1. This is our general solution, our fundamental solution. The fundamental solution. So, wait a minute. What did we spend our first hour doing? I love it. The number of times people come up to me, and this class is not guilty of this. People are like, did we do anything important in class? No. Okay, good. <laughs> Uh, we did something important in our first hour. We looked at the different cases of our solutions. We looked at our different cases. So let's take, let's run through those. 